Mount Joy. All right, we're going to go all the way back to the old time church today. Yeah. We're going to sing uh, Walk With Me, Lord, while I'm on this tedious. That's how I want you to say it. Tedious journey. <laughs> I want Jesus to walk with me.
Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Way to take us back, Miss Lisa. And the choir. Y'all, can you give it up for the choir and Miss Lisa? It's a good day. It's a good day. Uh, God is faithful. You're beautiful. We here. <laughs> and it's something to celebrate. So I hope that you guys are celebrating your breath, your life. Um, there's nothing like it. Um, and so I am here standing before you um, in honor um, of God, in honor of our pastor and first lady, and in honor of you. Y'all, I, I, this morning I woke up just like, we made it. <laughs> like we've come through so many things. Can you think about the things you've made it through? that you can count your blessings for. Y'all, it's a miracle. It's a great thing. Um, but I'm also here to give the announcements. Um, so with that being said, I need y'all to travel with us so we know what's going on for the rest of the month. Uh, first and foremost, this Wednesday, we're gonna be meeting downstairs. Pastor said give us a two hour block because last time 90 minutes wasn't enough. Uh, we may or may not stay two hours, but we're gonna be talking about grief and relationships. We're gonna be building off our last a forum that we had that was on grief and loss and how do we deal with that. Remember, we're doing these once a month and we'll have a professional in there uh, as well as pastors and other biblical scholars to make sure we can walk this life according to what God said, but also with tangible how-tos. Amen? This is important, you guys. We got to make the word come alive in our life. It can't just be something we read in the morning and we don't apply later. Make sense? So the goals of these forums is to understand what we're going through, see what God says about it, and then put them into practice. Amen? So we hope that you'll be here. We'll have Dr. Cal Meese breaking us down as our professional. He's also a therapist. So that should be excellent. Next, we have our Love Is Weekend. It's the first event put on through our young adult ministry, and it's actually for everybody. On Saturday, we will be at Essential Venues. Um, if you're on Facebook, the event is there with more details. We're going to have a panel and a game night. So if you like to play adult games, come through. Uh, if you want to learn more about what the Word of God says about what love is, not just in romantic relationships, come through. And then on Sunday, we'll be here from 5 to 7. We have a great couple coming to bring the Word. We're going to have food. We're going to have a good time. It's for everybody. If you have questions, talk to me afterwards. Amen. Yeah, okay. So, um, just based off what I've seen for the past 18, 20 years with Ms. Howard, we know that we have to practice early for our programs with our children. And I just want y'all to know on Tuesday nights, they're doing amazing. They come for choir rehearsal, and it, it is, God is in the place. The spirit is moving. These babies are singing. And uh, we are starting our Easter practice, which will be on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. here. So, if you have babies, come at 6 and join us for prayer meeting. Hey. And then we'll have them for another hour, and Miss Tracy Mallet is helping lead us. And we just thank you for the, the direction you've given us, Miss Howard, um, throughout the years. If you have any questions, please reach out to Tracy Mallet. Um, last but not least, uh, we are going to be having a Underground Railroad tour in Alton, Illinois, on Saturday, March 4th. The time will be from 1 to 3 p.m. Please RSVP with Mr. Keith or Tracy by the last Sunday in February. How many people went last year? Any people in the room? Make some noise. <laughs> yes, because I, I heard it was excellent. We're going to do it again. Uh, for youth, it's free, and, and this is a youth council event. So we're asking that you bring the babies. If they go here or not, bring the babies. And then we would invite adults to come as well. And it, the cost for you is $10. All right. So every week, we have Bible study on Zoom at noon. How many of you join us at noon? Yes, Ms. Doja has some great insight. Yeah, it's the crew right here. Well, it's open for everybody. It's inclusive. So the, the Zoom link will be going out. Please join us. Remember, every Wednesday we're here, and then once a month we'll be having those forums on Wednesday nights. And now we get to February. We got some, stand up if you got on some beautiful African gear. Go ahead, stand up, show it off now, you wore it. Yes, yeah, come on, Miss Seabrook. Yes, come through, Pastor, you standing? You got the full suit on. Let's get it, yes. Listen, we celebrate black culture every day of the year, okay, right, that's 365. But it's imperative in the month of February that we honor and celebrate where we've come from and we're kings and queens. But what we've done in this country is pretty amazing as well. And we have three young people that are gonna be breaking us off on some of our black history. And so first up, we're gonna have Zane Hawkins. Remember to introduce yourself. So give us your name, your school, and who you're going to be presenting. Can you stand right here for me, Zane? He's talking through this. No, nope, here we go. Take this mic. 
My name is Zane. I'm in first grade. I'm in Fritz Pollard. Was the first African American football so coach in the NFL. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, good job, Zane. All right, then we'll have Martasia Hill and then we'll have Imani Hawkins. You guys can come after one another. Good morning, my name is Martasia Hill and I am 19 years old and the person I chose was Phyllis Wheatley. Phyllis Wheatley was born May 8th, 1753 in West Africa and died in December 5th, on December 5th, 1784 in Boston, Massachusetts. She was sold as a young child to John and Susanna Wheatley and was sent to Boston on a slave ship called the Phyllis, hence how she got her name. John and Susanna's children began tutoring Phyllis. By the age of 12, she could read Latin and Greek in their original language, along with difficult verses of the, of the Bible. <laughs> At age 14, Wheatley wrote her first poem. The Wheatleys quickly realized Phyllis's literary ability and decided to pursue her education further. Fast forward to 1773. Phyllis traveled with the Wheatleys to publish one of her poems. Her first book to get published was Poems on Various Subjects, Religions, and Moral which was published that same year. Wheatley became the first African-American slave, first person of African descent, and the only the third colonial American woman to have their work published. Wheatley wrote over 100 poems and went on to have several books published before she passed at the age of 31. I encourage you all to look deeper into her story since I don't have much time up here, but before I go, I would like to read you one of her poems. This poem is called On Being Brought from Africa to America. Twas mercy brought me from my pagan land, taught, to benighted, taught my benighted soul to understand that there's a God, there's a savior too, one's redemption I neither sought nor knew. Some view our sable race with the scornful eye. This color is a disgrace, a diabolical lie. Remember, Christians, Negroes, black as cane, may be refined and join the angelic train. Um, hi, my name is Imani Hawkins. Um, I go to Triad High School, and I am in ninth grade, and I am presenting Kentonji Brown Jackson. <laughs> Kentonji Brown Jackson was born September 14, 1970, in Washington, D.C. She was raised in Miami, Florida. She went to Harvard University and then attended Harvard Law School, where she served as an editor of the Harvard Law Review. Prior to her elevation to the court, of appeal, she served as a district judge for the District Court of Columbia. Kuntaji is an American jurist who serves as an Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States. Jackson was nominated to the Supreme Court by President Joe Biden on February 25, 2022. She was confirmed by the United States Senate on April 7, 2022, and sworn into office on June 30, 2022. Kentonji Brown Jackson is the first African American woman to serve as a justice of the court. Learn some things today. Uh, uh, now you know, I'm not sure if she mentioned it, that if you have announcements, you should send them in to the Mount Joy Media uh, account at yahoo.com, Montreal Media, and, and don't wait till Sunday morning. In fact, don't wait till Saturday night. Uh, get them in by noon Saturday, if you will, okay? Um, it's time for our prayer. We, we're blessed today to be here. There are many who would love to be here, but aren't blessed to do it. Uh, there are many who've been sick and trying to come back. And there are, some, there are many who are sick and dealing with things. Uh, God is comfort. Our Sunday school lesson talked about the fact that uh, he is our comforter. 
and we ought to be comforting each other. That means that we ought to be praying for and wishing well and encouraging those who are who are going through because we all get our chance. Amen? I hope there's somebody here who hasn't had it yet, but most of us have already had one bout or two bouts or three or four bouts uh, with trials and tribulations. Uh, if you have a prayer stance, you can get on your knees, you can come to the altar, uh, you can just stand in place. But however you can shut out yourself and shut out the outside and uh, tune in to God. You, you can't pray if you don't tune in to God. Uh, so uh, it doesn't matter what they're playing on that station. If you're not tuning in, you don't know it. So I want to communicate with God today. I want to talk to God. I want God to hear me, but I, more, I want him, I, I want to hear him. And some of us, it's been a while since we heard God because we've not been listening. Will you stand? Will you bow? We have a special prayer list. We have uh, Turkey and Syria from the earthquake. Uh, we have Pat Bones. We have Caritha Carpenter. We have Shirley Lowry, who is in the, the river crossing we have next to the high school, room 514. We have Rose Thompson. We have Glenn Wilson. Uh, we have Keith Williams. Uh, we have you. We have me. And we don't know what tomorrow holds, but we do know who holds tomorrow. Can we pray? Father God, we come this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, we come as humble as we know how to come, realizing, acknowledging the fact that you are God and you're God by yourself. We pray, Lord, a blessing upon this congregation, on every seat, on every individual, on every situation. We pray, Lord, for grace and mercy, Lord, to just make it through a day. We thank you, Lord, for what we've already come through. We thank you, Father, for the blessings we already have. We thank you for things, Lord, we take for granted, like food and water and clothing and heat and those kind of good things. And we pray, Lord, that you will continue to supply our needs. We pray, Father, for those people in Turkey and Syria under the earthquake. Somebody's buried still. Have mercy, Lord. We pray for Pat as he addresses his issue, his kidneys. We pray for Claritha. We pray for Shirley Laurie and her family. We pray for Rose Thompson. For Glenn Wilson, for Keith Williams, Lord, and we realize that we're not calling all the names. We realize the Lord that we've not listed all the situations. Somebody is suffering in silence. They haven't told anybody about the hard time. Lord, we all need you today. Your word says that you comfort in every situation. And somebody's having a hard time getting through. And sometimes, the oh Lord, it looks like we're not going to make it through. But we put our trust today. Not in our abilities, Lord, not because we deserve so much, but your grace and mercy has promised to us that when we call, you would hear and you would answer. On behalf of your people today, we call that you would see our situations, that you would see our, our homes and our families and our loved ones that you would bless today, that you would show us, Lord, here at Mount Joy how to be a church and uh, bless us, Lord, to know how to worship and to know how to praise and, and true praise. And Father, I pray, Lord, that we have an atmosphere, dear Lord, of worship right in here, that, that those who love you, Lord, might uh, show their love and th those who come in seeking that love might feel that love. We pray for young people, dear Lord, who are trying to figure out their way. Pick them up, dear Lord, where they're falling down. Give them strength, Father, where they're already strong. We pray for those, dear Lord, who, who, uh, whose steps are getting shorter, dear Lord, and uh, uh, bless them, dear Lord, and, and give them confidence, Lord, to continue on. Bless your word that your word might bless your people. 
that your people might bless each other. And Lord, we be careful to give you all the honor and all the praise and all the glory for it belongs to you. Amen. Thank God. we sing this one, I want to give you just a little history on uh, spiritual songs. Um, it's going to be a Negro spiritual. And uh, I was looking it up, and the historians are not sure as to who exactly wrote it, but they believe uh, the person were enslaved. And um, the reason why they wrote songs about uh, joy and uh, being holy and to be like Jesus was to follow the true uh, tradition or the, the true teachings of Jesus uh, instead of some of the things they were being told by like some of the slave masters they wanted to represent what was true uh, behind Christianity this song is called Lord I want to be a Christian in my heart I want to be more loving. want to be more holy. Lord, I want to be more holy in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be more holy in my heart. Christian, Lord, I to be a Christian, to be a Christian. I don't want to be like Judas. Judas. To be like Judas in my heart. In my heart. I don't want to be like Judas. 
to be like Jesus. Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart. Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart. In my heart. In my heart. In my heart. Lord, I want to be a Christian. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. Lord, I want to be a Christian. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. One more time. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. heart. Yeah. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm glad Brother Pitts got his solo today. Amen. Did, did good, man. want to be, you know, we're not going to be anything that we don't want to be. And uh, some of us don't do no better because we don't want to do no better. But if we love God like we said we do, like he loves us, then we'll want to be from our heart. Not because people would make it okay, but I want to be pleasing in his sight. There's a passage of scripture found in the book of 2 Corinthians. We studied that this morning a little bit. I want to read, I want us to read, if you'll stand please, verses 9 through 21. So that's, that's about chapter 5, I'm sorry. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and it's, it's right here. If you can, I don't know if you can see that or not. Uh, I can't see way back there though. Uh, uh, and that song kind of fits so let's read it together therefore we make it our aim whether present or absent to be well pleasing to him for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that each one may receive the things done in this body according to what he has done whether good or bad knowing to the the terror of the Lord. We persuade men, but we are well known to God, and I also trust are well known in your consciences. For we do not commend ourselves again to you, but give you opportunity to boast on our behalf, that you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance and not in heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God, or if we are of sound mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ compels us, because we judge thus, that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things now all things are of God. Who, 
That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their impotences to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us. Be reconciled to God, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. Amen. Amen. May God bless the reading and the hearing of the word. Now, that's, that's only half a chapter. Amen. We can do that. Amen. Uh, think with me from the subject, and uh, I hope I can get to this uh, from now on. Based on all that we read, We decided, God has proclaimed that from now on. And, and, and living forward, not in the past or what I used to be, not based on how I was raised. This is not about my mother and my father. This is about my pledge for my future. What would you write down if I ask you to write down your pledge for your future? What have you gleaned in life that gives you the impetus to live a certain way and do certain things and not do certain things, to act out in such ways. Uh, uh, what have you sworn off? And what have you sworn on? <laughs> Most of you know that I had a career in education before I began to spend all my time serving the church. I used to be an administrator for the Everettsville School District. And even though I'm not on that job anymore, I still love me some kids. In fact, it was my pleasure to have had the chance to speak into the lives of those, so many young people. One of the things in my life that I, I take the most pride in is having made a, a, a huge positive difference in the lives of many kids. In fact, I brag sometimes about all the kids who made it through high school, at least partially because of the influence that I was able to have over them. I count it as time well spent. Now, having said that, one of the most heartbreaking things for me is observing the many young people who do not complete school, even high school, uh, because I know the difficult days that they have before them if they don't take care of their business. Right. I can remember reading in the paper some years ago about uh, one of, I call them my boys, about one of the boys who, who went to my school getting arrested and being sentenced to, I think it was 25 years. I mean, it's a horrible thing uh, uh, to do with some child abuse. And they, you know, he was, they, they locked him up. And I didn't say too much out loud, but it made me depressed and sick to my stomach. So I, I want to talk today about stopping before we get too far. I want to talk today about saying from now on. See, I, I did some things in my younger days that I, I decided not to do anymore. I, I went some places that I decided not to go anymore. I, I acted in some ways that I decided not to act anymore.
when I consider those who make, let me call them life-ruining mistakes, see, some stuff we recover from, but some stuff we don't. I, I notice one thing that they all, or that we all seem to have in common. Professional socialists talk about race being an issue and racial background being an issue and social economic status being an issue, a problem, uh, and a lack of education being a problem, and that's true. But although all those factors do make a difference, uh, the most prevalent factor uh, that those who destroy themselves have in common is that they, is that we make it a habit of destructive behavior. What are you talking about, Pastor? Uh, one bad decision, one mess up, one error in judgment usually doesn't land us in total destruction by itself. Right. Every one of us has made a mistake or two and most of us have been able to avoid the destruction that would have come to us if we hadn't changed. Every one of us has, has, has done things and made decisions that were self-destructive. I found out that I needed to think before I acted and think before I talked because when I don't think about before I do things, then I end up regretting what I did. But some of us have had enough grace to have gotten by or, 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 or gotten away with some stuff that if the wrong people had gotten a hold of it, would have changed the path of our lives in a negative direction. Can anybody think back on, a, on something that you did or said that, uh, it, it, that, that you, you, you just got you got away with it, but you, you, you know that you didn't have to, and you know that if, if everybody would have known what you did. It'd be pointing and talking right now. You might not admit it, but you're included. I, I know it applies to me. And I'm not giving any, 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 any more details, but I, I could have gotten myself expelled from high school, some stuff I did, instead of getting a scholarship to go to college. But God, but God's grace, God's mercy. I, I could have gotten a dishonorable discharge from the army instead of an honorable discharge and a commendation for doing good work. But God. And I'm not bragging on getting away with wrong stuff. Right. I'm confessing that the only way I was preserved was that the grace and the mercy of God. And that I listened before it was too late. What allowed God's grace and mercy to bring me through was that I didn't keep on doing the self-destructive stuff. I, I did my share. I finally heard and, and heeded God's call. And, and somebody here today is on the edge and they haven't been listening, haven't been paying attention to what God said. and 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 and. and, and and this may be the last time. God winked yesterday, but I don't mean he's going to wink tomorrow. My saving grace was that God uh, got his hands on me and changed my heart before it was too late. But those who didn't hear God and heed and, and, and continued their, their, their self-destructive behavior uh, over and over again soon reap the destruction that sin always brings. Don't fool yourself. It's not always what happens to somebody else. If you stay there, it's happening to you. I, I, I've read, and most of you have, have, have read 
and heard someone read uh, the fifth chapter of Second Corinthians before today. I've quoted parts of it during funerals. When I was reading it a week or so ago, this passage grabbed me in a way that it never grabbed me before. And I think it could be a huge blessing if you pay attention to what it's saying to us today. In this letter to the Corinthian church, uh, we are witnessing the Apostle Paul attempting to defend his faith and character as an apostle. He's been questioned. They told him he wasn't nothing, that, that, that he, he really wasn't alive to see Christ, so he couldn't be an apostle. And, and one thing that jumps out at me every time I, I read this is Paul letting all of us know uh, that we will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Every one of us. And give an account for the things done in this body, whether they are bad or good. Now, our deeds are not, uh, our, our deeds are recorded, in this case, not for salvation purposes. So we, we get confused. We say, uh, well, well uh, I'm saved, so uh, that stuff don't count no more. But uh, you can be saved, but, but God going to hold you accountable. You see? There are blessings and then there, there, there are rewards in heaven. As I just said, that, that, that judgment is not about salvation or getting into heaven, but we will all be accountable for what we do as Christians. We can fool people, but we, we can't pull the wool over God's eyes. Now, that, that's not the sermon, but I, I had to make that clear. Uh, I should also note that Christ died for our sin and that if we repent and put our trust in him, we are guaranteed a ticket to salvation. I, I wish I had time to go over all of this in detail, but, but uh, you need to go read it. We can't cover it in just one sermon. Uh, Give me a call if you have a question. Uh, the thing that really impressed me in this passage is the fact that Paul gives all the credit. Listen to me. Paul gives all the credit for who he is now and for what he has accomplished to God. That doesn't always happen. Some of us try to take all the credit for ourselves every time we help with a good outcome. I did this, and I, you know, you can't save nobody. You can help somebody. But Paul knows that he was not always, uh, he hadn't always been who he was then. You ever see somebody, you know, I remember when they were kids. My wife said, acting a monkey, yeah. <laughs> Paul knew that he had not always been loving and kind and helpful. He, he knows that uh, he once persecuted the church and, and threw every Christian that he could find in jail. He knows that he has no right to be an apostle or, or anything else in the church based on his history of deeds. He doesn't mention it here, but, but God met him on uh, a road called Damascus one day uh, in the middle of his crusade to persecute the church. And Christ, uh, the Bible says that uh, uh, a bright light shone. And, you know, and, and they, say it, they say it's a light, but I believe it's the glory of God that, 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 that opened up on him and, and uh, he fell to the ground. It don't say he was riding anything, but he fell to the ground. Jesus asked him, Saul, why, why, why persecutest thou me? Well, Paul had never met him. Lord, I ain't doing nothing to you. But Christ let him know that if you do it to the least of my children, you're doing it to me. You, you, we need to watch what we're sniping on. We need to watch out who, we, who we're criticizing. 
We need to think about it because uh, that, that person that we're criticizing, if they belong to God, yes. you talk about me, you're offending God. You can think, and Paul thought he was striking a blow against people. But he was striking a blow against Christ. And can I tell you that, that God takes it personal? God turned Paul around and gave him a, and, and th this is a big deal here. God turned him around and gave him a new goal in life. You know, when you, you come up to, you know, the doors of the church are open, you come up and sit in a chair uh, and get baptized. Things should be different yeah. than they were before you came and made the commitment. Uh, instead of Paul pleasing the Pharisees and the rulers and the Sadducees, Paul began to please God. And I'm glad today that God met me on my road to destruction and turned me around. Is there anybody here who wasn't going in the right way? Who wasn't helping themselves? I, I was doing stuff, and I, I thought it was the right stuff, but it, I wasn't helping myself. So God turned me around and, and, and showed me what to do and when to do and how to do. I heard Paul say in another passage, he says, I am what I am by the grace of God it's not because I was so smart it's not because of my mom or my daddy it's not because of, uh, uh, of what color I am it's not because of what country I live in you know you can destroy yourself anywhere When I was standing in, in, in formation over and over and over in Germany, and I, I, I had a Paul, I, I, I had a pipe in my hand. They could have kicked me out for that. How many times have we done stuff that we could have lost our, our, our freedom, our, our lost our friend? Destructive stuff. I am what I am. By the grace of God. All the credit, all the praise goes to God. As we put the, the magnifying glass on, the, on, the, on verse number nine, he, he says, therefore we make it our aim. I've said all this stuff now, but we make it our aim because of that. Whether present or absent, to be well pleasing to him. Who are you trying to impress? President, a popular friend, or God. Therefore, we make it our aim. What's your aim? You don't just get a gun and just shoot. You got to aim. In, in all of our lives, no matter who we are, we need to aim. We ought to have some goals that we're going after. We ought to have some things that we're trying to do. And we need God's counsel on what they ought to be. Now, now the, the, uh, Paul says, the him Paul says here is referring to God. I, I, I'm trying to move on, but according to some of our stories, our, our, our wrongs uh, 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 were small and our, uh, uh, inconsequential. You let us tell it. Paul acknowledged being a, a chief sinner in his past. And, and the key to Paul's story, the, the key to my story, uh, whether you admit it or not, the key to your story is not to keep on doing what you were doing. I, I just want to stop here for, for just a moment and ask you if you have something to, to, uh, to write on and something to write with. Put down your aim in life. Be honest. Now, I'm not talking about what it should be. 
So, so in, in order for us to get on the right page, uh, uh, God sometimes got to interrupt us, interrupt us, right? And change us. So this is not for me, it's for you and God to see. For some of us, our, our primary aim in life might be making as much money as we can. Others of us might, might have the primary aim of getting to the highest position that we can. Others of us may, may aim to be as powerful or, or, or popular as we can. Some of us are, uh, aim to push our children as, uh, as far in life, you know, and we do that as we can. Somebody else want to have as much pleasure or fun as we can. Somebody else to go as many places huh, as we can. Right. Now, if you don't know what your aim is, uh, look at your calendar and look at your checkbook. Well, y all, y all, people don't write checks no more, do they? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, they, they, they did, did do debt. And they don't, I can't understand how you can just be, not keep up with your money. I, I, pay, I pay stuff online, but I, I write down what I paid. I paid it. But I just, you know. You ought to know your aim. Uh, Paul had an aim, but, but after he, he met Jesus on the Damascus Road, uh, he let his aim go and got a new aim. And his new aim was pleasing God. Uh, somebody here might need Somebody here is wondering what's going on, but someone right here might need a new aim. What I'm after is not going to help me. Sometimes what we're after doesn't please us. Sometimes what we're after doesn't do what we thought it was going to do for us. Paul's new aim was pleasing God. And, and that doesn't mean that you can't do anything else. I'm not saying that the only thing you can ever do in life is, is please God. God will help you decide what you want to be and who you want to be. And you can do some other stuff, but your main priority ought to be pleasing God. And I already mentioned in verse 10 that, that we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. You know, and we can cover up and, and excuse our record before people. But Christ knows the real deal. I, I, I share some stuff with you to, uh, for illustration purposes, but there, there's some stuff that only God knows about me. Nobody teaches this, and many of us seem not to know about or, or believe what we read about the terror of God. There's some stuff you ought to be afraid to say about people. Some things you ought to be afraid to do in front of God. In spite of what people say, God hates sin. The Bible gives us many illustrations of the fact that uh, God judges sin. And I need to warn somebody who thinks that they are saved today uh, that God brings hellfire down on those who ignore the chances he gives us. And the point Paul is making here, I'm just about done. In verse 12 is that none of us can brag on us. Tell somebody next to you, say, you know what, that goes for you too. And you get a chance to get home even at the game and say, none of us can brag on us. And we might as well own the stuff we've done. I'm not above you. None of us can put ourselves up as the model for everyone else. None of us is all that. At the same time, uh, in Christ, we, we are all of that. But we're bragging not on ourselves, we're bragging on him. I am what I am 
by the grace of God. Listen, and, and this, this is proper motivation uh, uh, for us. And, and uh, for the love of Christ, this is Paul talking, for the love of Christ compels us. God's love speaks to my heart. And, and, and th th that's, some, that's some stuff on you that I don't want to do. And God said, do it. That's what they get. Do it. What's compelling you? For the love of Christ compels us. Because, he says, we, 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 we judge thus, that if one died for all, then all died. That's big. Uh, all of us are guilty and subject to the law, but if one died for all, the stuff I did that I ain't going to tell you, if one died for all, I'm not condemned. Later on, he says, uh, 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 there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Uh, all of us are guilty and subject to the law, but uh, uh, if one died for all. You see, if, if we were born into sin... We can be born into righteousness. Because of what Adam did, when I came here, I was, I was sin, bent, sin bent. But because of what Christ did, and when I gave in to him, when, when I trusted him, my bent has changed. The one Paul is talking about here is Jesus. He died for all. Uh, we're off the hook for all of our, 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 our mess-ups, Isaiah. You ever mess up? So you ever mess up and people knew it? And you know it? I, I'm so glad that I'm off the hook for my mess-ups. And, 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 and people can't point the fingers. <laughs> we went to a, a play last night, and uh, uh, certain things, uh, a couple of people stood up and go, oh, look at you. Look at what you've done. Yeah, I did it, but I'm off the hook for my mess-ups. I'm guilty, but it's already paid for. I don't have to hold my, I don't have to live my life with my head down. I thank God for that. Because of what Christ did. This passage teaches us that he died for those of us who no longer, listen to this, listen to it now, who no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. And I need you to, to see this. I, I, I need you to get this picture. Uh, in order to have Jesus' life, death and resurrection, apply to us, first, he had to, 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 to own us and give us the invitation. Then secondly, and this is what many of us miss, we got to own him. We have to surrender our, our, ourselves to him. Uh, we got to die to self and begin to live for him. What was that movie, Trading Places? He traded places with us. But I can't stay like I was and trade places with Jesus. I got to give up me and become him. That's what Christianity is all about. It's about uh, me dying to me and living to him. And if you haven't died to you, I say if you haven't died to you, you can't be 
living to him. Paul said, I, 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 I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And in the life that I now live, I know I used to, but from now on, I don't. The life that I now live, if any man, any woman, any, any child, any boy, any girl is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things. Uh, somebody in here needs to let some old stuff go. Old things are passed away. Behold, you can see it. All things have become new. What is it you have that needs to be put in the rear, rear view mirror? What is it you have that is old? Can you say from now on? Can you say it? I know I talked about them yesterday, but from now on I ain't talking about nobody. I know I acted evil when, when they did that, but from now on I'm not going to act that way. I know I got mad and cussed them out. But from now on, I used to hear old people say, I got a made up mind. That's what Paul had. Christianity is not just about showing up at church once or twice a week. It's about a relationship between you and God. Jesus changed places with us so we can change places with him. And because of that, 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 that that's, the, that's the motivation. That, that's the reason for my change because, because he died for my sins. My life is not my own. In order to have Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, first he has to own us, and second, we had to own him. From now on, I'm claiming a new life. And because of that, I'm not judged according to my past. You don't have to be regarded or judged according to the flesh. Or, 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 or all of our mess ups, all of our sins, all of our bad acts are covered in what Jesus already did. And since I'm in Christ, because I am in Christ, the Bible tells us right here that anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. And you know, and we need to be clear that this is not, it's not about living in sin. then saying you're sorry and going back and doing the same thing again. We got a chance to start over right now. There has to be a, a, a declaration. You, you got to let say, no, you know what? I'm not going there no more. From now on, I'm going to be a new man. You know, and, and, and here's, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm quitting. Uh, God assigned the Holy Spirit to help us. I don't know about you, but I couldn't do it just by myself. That old man, that, those old urges. But Dr. Chief, bro, uh, as long as we're down here, we, we, we're going to be tempted. And temptation 
is tempting? But you know what? The devil has fooled me the last time with some stuff. I, I'm not going to say that I won't ever be fooled again, but there's some things he's fooled me the last time with. And the Spirit of God can give me the power to resist. And when I resist Paul, I get strength. I'm not throwing my legs up anymore and just letting them go on with the flow. I know where it leads. How about you today? Do you have a chance to make a declaration in your life? A, a, a chance to commit to God? A chance to commit to righteousness? And it don't have to be all in your own power. You got to want to. But the Spirit of God will help you if you want to. Resist the devil. And he'll flee. From now on. Don't keep going the same way. Falling into the same hole. Thinking you're going to do the same thing and something's going to change. Father God, we thank you. We pray for your people today. We pray for our dedication to obedience and righteousness and considering your way and your will. Somebody's been failing and failing and failing and their time has run out. Somebody won't have tomorrow to make this decision. I just pray that this, your spirit would touch hearts, that somebody who came in on the fence would get off, that someone who came in repenting and re repeating and repenting and repeating might draw a line and change your life with your power and your will. And Lord, we thank you for it. Lord, we thank you for the help. We thank you, Lord, that when we resist, you come in and, and, and support and help us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The doors of the church open. If you're looking for a place to fellowship, we invite you to come. If you're looking for prayer, we invite you to come. If you want to make that dedication, that, that you know what, I'm, if you want to announce it, I'm trusting Christ. And I know I was that yesterday, but from now on, that's not me anymore. We invite you to come. If the Spirit of God is speaking to your heart online, you can put it, put it in the chat. We can get with you and, and, and help you if you have questions. Will you live forward? Precious Jesus, how I love you. How I love you. How I lift high my voice with your praise. Somebody ought to commit today. convinced I have been changed to bless your name I am constrained by this great gospel forever to worship thee Oh, pray.
precious Jesus, precious Jesus, how I love you, how I love you, how I lift, how I lift high my voice, high with your praise. Holy Spirit, thank you, Lord. I implore thee. Drench my heart as my lips part your grace. The part say, I'm persuaded. I am persuaded. Yeah, yeah. I am persuaded. Lord, I have been changed to bless your name. I am constrained by this great gospel. Forever, forever. We see there are none, yet there is room. Let me remind you that Wednesday evening, beginning at 6, uh, we have uh, uh, professionals coming in. We're going to continue our, our journey uh, to learn some things that we need to learn and to, uh, we're going to shine the light on some things that need to have the, sh the light shine on them about how we should prepare and handle our grief and our relationships in that. So uh, please come. Uh, Prepared when you come, prepare to go to eight, but we, we'll try to get out before that. But we, we, we don't want to cut it off before we finish. Uh, if all hearts are clear, may we stand. I am persuaded, Lord. I have been changed to bless your name. Constrained by this great gospel, oh, forever. Uh, last night we went to a dinner play. Uh, thank the uh, brother and sister Spillers for studying it up for us. Uh, we, we had a good time. We had, we had a good time. Uh, some of the people there said some things about my friend Angie that I don't believe. I don't know why they said that stuff, but uh, <laughs> well, we had a, we had a good time. I think everybody enjoyed it. Amen. So we we thank God for that. We'll continue. We we will begin our marriage ministry again uh, for Sunday in March. We'll try to set that up. Okay. I I, I think we got to work at things that are important. Amen. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion rest within the Bible with us and for not forevermore. Amen. <laughs>